What is up you guys, it's Godson and welcome back to Aluvanomics. Today we're gonna be looking at the three types of tanks that you will be using inside of Alluvium. I've labeled them the Alpha, Beta, and Omega tanks. These are all bulwark. However, there are tanks inside the game that aren't bulwark. Uh, they do have high health and they can kind of capture or stall rogues or enemy troops, which I will be breaking down inside this video. Uh, but the three, I've um, come up to three alluvials that really fit perfectly these class types that I have. Uh, the beta, we could go with the Axodon, would be the beta type of uh, tank. Now, this, doesn't, this isn't degrading in any way to say it's a beta tank. This just means that, uh, for, for my example, a uh, beta tank would be something that's kind of weaker in the beginning. But if you're able to get his hyper... Uh, his ability scales towards the end game and he can actually be really strong late game because of his um, because of bulwarks what they have is uh, when they go hyper they get uh, physical and energy resist they get two percent of their max health that they regenerate so uh, Axodon's perfect for a late game type of bulwark a late game type of tank so early game, you don't want to put too many alluvials on him because he'll go down fast. But late game, he scales and he's really awesome. The next would be the Alpha Tank. I would say that Seer would be the Alpha Tank. You could put two or more alluvials on him. I would say two would be perfect. Um, and because of his design, the way he is, he can take a lot of damage. And his uh, Mega ability, it does like a spinning move. So he's meant for tons of people to be on him so he can take him down and really just to counter um seer is pretty tough the way that he's designed he's really heavy on health heavy on defense and he does moderate to good damage but it's slow damage so you don't want to have too many of their damage dealers focusing him because he can't get melted if he's in the front if you have one that's fine i typically use him in the back where he can catch rogues because of his omega ability when he spins it's perfect for multiple rogues on him just be careful if you put him in the front because he will get melted if too many people are targeting him titanor would be your omega tank this guy can soak up so much damage you can put three or four alluvials on this guy and he can take it but not too many burst damage if you put alluvials that are that can build hyper off of him then that would be where they could take him down fast or tons of burst damage characters the burst damages would be your carries things like a uh, dwellif uh you know any burst damage character that does really high damage you don't want to put him on the titanor but he can take lots of tanks and with him if he's able to get hyper he basically is able to like it's, it's hard to kill if this guy gets hyper and if you have a healer then it's a gg he's gonna go the whole round all the way to the one minute mark and not get taken down so um, these would be the three types of tanks, your Beta, Alpha, and Omega tanks. However, you do have other tanks that are Bulwark, and they are similar to, for example, the Beta. Malura would be an also like a Beta tank. He scales late game if you can get his Hyper. Now, some people may disagree with me on that because he actually is pretty tanky on the fly. I just feel I can counter him pretty easily, so that's why I'm not putting him as an Alpha tank at the moment. The Archeleon probably would be um, a beta alpha. He's like a mix, a hybrid between the two because of his uh, empath basically can recover health and he can take damage. So it's a little hard to gauge him. Uh, but there are some other, you know, non-traditional tanks that people are using inside of Alluvium like Adorius. Adorius is one of the tanks where if you have character knowledge, you can put him up against other alluvials, for example, like Rake or Umbre. If you could put Adorius against that, he can tank for you because he has high health and he gets his health back. So these types of tanks that are, you know, kind of uncommon, but because they have high health, you can use these as tanks. And even characters like Blaze Knight or Fern Knight, because they are empaths, they give health back and they have high health, you could use them to stop rogues. Uh, but just because they have high health doesn't mean that they can tank. For example, you have uh, Ramfire. He has more health and more damage than Rip Lance, but Rip Lance can take him out because of the, the way he's made. So this is just character knowledge. Having a fighter up against a rogue, even though the rogue seems and appears stronger, 
um, he can be taken down with Rip Lance because of the way he's made. And, you know, this even goes for your carries. These are called glass cannons. Even if they have higher health than other alluvials, they are not meant for being in the front. They are not meant for catching rogues. You have to protect these guys. So protecting them would be using your tanks. The last person I forgot to mention was the hunter or ranger, whatever pronoun you like. Uh, this is a tank if you equip her with the windshield. Now, she was actually an alpha tank in the previous version of the beta, but now I feel she's a beta tank because she can get taken down fast, faster than what she was. However, uh, she is a pretty good tank. I would say she's like right in the middle between that alpha beta tank. She can take some, you know, a couple rogues and stall them. And because she has a stun, really helps her out, really tank and stall these guys. So guys, I know this can all be confusing if you haven't even played the game yet, but um, I will be doing video tutorials giving you all of the knowledge what can counter what alluvials and what works great against certain types of affinities. But to summarize, you have your alpha, beta, and omega tanks. Your beta tanks, you want to protect them just until they can get hyper or until they can get their ability off. The alpha tanks, you can basically catch rogues with those. You can put them in front unless you can back him up because he can get melted pretty fast if there's too much pressure on him. And then the Omega tanks, you can put them in the front, you can put them in the back, but you basically want to protect and catch as many you know enemies as you can on those guys. Not too many if they can build hyper on them, but catch the smaller troops, the squishy ones with these tanks because they can basically take a lot of damage. They soak it up. And if you can get them into their hyper mode with a healer, they're basically unstoppable. So guys, there it is. Thank you so much for watching. This is Godson. Be sure to check out the next video on the top right, and I will see you on the next episode.